The legendary. What's going on, brother? Now, I'm going to start off with the most important question. There was a moment that you really got me, and I think it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen in the middle of the world. We talk about it. The retirement speech. The salmon suit. The salmon suit. Hey, you know what? Good guys wear pink. I don't care what nobody say. I, was, I look live in that pink. So did you expect when you did that thing, you would come out retirement speech in inverted commas, and everybody was really into it, and then you just you just worked them right into it, and, and that was that. What was that experience like for you? Did you expect the reaction it was going to get? Yeah, I mean, because it was it was real, because I actually planned on retiring, and then uh, Vince talked me out of it and said, listen, if there ever was a time, now's the time. And that's, that's Vince's genius. He's always been able to look at a situation and go, oh my God, this is an opportunity. Yeah. And then we, we took it and ran. And other raw, I mean, you've got, you've got a lot of cool raw moments. I mean, the one that they keep playing every time they get their shows, you yes. and me on, which is, you know. Sexual chocolate, baby. Which, uh, you know, your son, the, the son that came out. Oh, the hand. You know, if you look at that video, I'm laughing the whole time. I couldn't stop laughing. It was hysterical. Um, but I don't think it was really good with the China and Dayton thing you did as well. It's like, were you happy to be a part of all these? I mean, it was wacky storylines. But that's what people remember, right? People remember this stuff that's kind of out there. And it's, you, know, it's stuff. you know what? I've always been a clown. So the stuff that I did that was where I was clowning and acting up and, you know, playing the fool, like that, that's right in my wheelhouse. Like, I, I really love and enjoy doing that. And uh, obviously Undertaker's been on Raw 25 tonight. Woo! Big talk about a comeback. Do you think we're going to see it? If, if we're up to you, who would you like to see him again if he comes back? Braun Strowman. I mean, Undertaker Braun Strowman. <laughs> he might be the only person that can actually put Braun Strowman in his place. Nailed it. And I have to ask you, because I was watching the WWE Uploads on the YouTube channel and last year's Royal Rumble match, which you were involved in. People keep asking about, you know, are you, are you finished in the ring? Do you have any more? Are you kind of playing it by ear and see what happens? And if someone piques your interest, you make it back in there. Tell us all what's happening. Man, I am I am old and everything hurts. And uh, I mean, like brushing my teeth hurts. So <laughs> the thought of me going in and matching with some big monster, jeez, I, you know why? It's like uh, not having good sense. <laughs> and then I get my favorite question: is, uh, You have this long career with WWE, and then in 2011, you become the World Heavyweight Champion. You have this great, you know, all of the games and all the stuff on SmackDown. That was just a blast to watch, um, and it felt like it was in your own department. It, it, it felt that way to not only me, but to everybody else. And, um, you know, I, I enjoyed every moment of the Hall of Fame era. Um, being a world champion, defending myself against everybody, and being in the ring with the greatest wrestlers in the world, I mean, it was just a great experience. And obviously, we there in the Atlantic Tours in the UK, we are going to try and get this man over. We're talk to them, we have business cards, bring them to come over. But even though you're the one you know what? A small nominal fee will get me to. Yeah, no. I want to say is you're the one of the strongest man of the whole thing, but to me, I don't think everybody watching you, you're always going to be the most sexual. Thank you, brother. Coming from you, that means a lot. <laughs>